Welcome to the Global Health and Nutrition Network Innovation Spotlight Series, part of the Supply Side Global Experience Program. In this episode, we travel to Kolkata, India to learn more about the incredibly rich history of Ayurveda and how cutting-edge science is being used to validate this centuries-old approach to health and wellness. In fact, we were introduced to a fascinating ingredient called Shilajit on this trip. Stay tuned to learn more. We're on location in Kolkata, India, uh, a beautiful place. Uh, part of this beauty is the incredible history of Ayurvedic medicine, something that we're going to spend the day learning about this history with Dr. Sani Raju, founder of Natrion. Uh, in addition to this incredible history, we're going to be learning about the science that Dr. Raju and others are applying to this uh, to bring these products, this innovation to the world. So let's go inside. As I sit with Dr. Raju, I wanted to start at the beginning to understand Ayurveda. So, Dr. Raju, what exactly does Ayurveda mean and where does it come from? Ayu means life, Veda means science. Ayurveda means science of life. And it has a history of about 3,000 years in India and uh, it is a part of uh, one of the four original scriptures of Hinduism. And uh, um, th that system of medicine actually originated from God, and the name of the God is Dhanvantari. And his messenger was a saint named Charaka. He has uh, written volumes on uh, me medicinal plants, and uh, we are working on these medicinal plants and bridging the gap between uh, original science and modern science. Can you put some context around this rich history and talk through an example? Its uh, history goes back to 3,000 years and uh, uh, it has uh, uh, even documented usage of one of the materials called Shilajit and it was, the evidence was found by British archaeologists uh, the use of this material, Shilajit, at Indus Valley civilization, which existed from 3500 BC to 2500 BC. Going back to 3500 BC, what exactly is Shilajit? This material uh, is a black, tarish material, and it used to be called mineral pitch or asphaltum because it uh, actually looked like uh, asphalt which we use to pave our uh, driveways. Yeah. And uh, until 1972, nobody knew what this material is composed of. And uh, at that time, Ministry of Health of Government of India has requested our professor, uh, Dr. Shivnath Goshal, to uh, delineate the chemical composition of this mysterious material. He found that this material comes from rock, soil, humus, uh, humic acids. And its history will go back nearly 200, 300 million years. It starts with uh, the first sea mammals, called ammonites and these ammonites you know soaked up the dibenzo alpha pyrones which are the active ingredients of shilajit which came from meteorites from space and when they went into sea these creatures absorbed those dibenzo alpha pyrone molecules for their own immunity and protection and when these sea animals ended up in the Himalayas when the Himalayas formed due to tectonic plate movement. They went into Himalayas and then they, you know, became fossilized and all that and over millions of years of, you know, humification, 
it became what is now called Shilajit. So the research and history of Shilajit has us intrigued, to say the least, so I wanted to get some understanding from Dr. Raju on how millennia ago, people determined that this fossilized material being pushed up through the Himalaya mountains could be healthy. People used to live in these uh, cold Himalayan mountains without much food, without much clothing, and they used to live there. And those are the people who discovered the uh, vitalizing property of Shilaji. And it uh, comes from the mountain rock surface. It oozes out as a black, tarish material. And uh, now the local people, villagers, they actually climb up there and they collect that material, bring it down, and then we you know, collect it from them. And then we do a lot of uh, scientific work to standardize the product and do quality control and all that. And then we offer it now in the form of a dry powder that can go into capsules or it can go into beverages, powder mixes for uh, many, many applications. As we have learned about the origin of this divine vitalizer, as Dr. Raju put it when we were off camera, I asked him to put this in perspective for us. He chuckled and said, well, then it is time for you to meet Dr. Goshal, who has been researching and testing Shilajit since 1972, and who, by the way, literally wrote the book on Shilajit. And you guessed it, it is called Shilajit in Perspective. So Dr. Goshal, in your own words, can you summarize what Dr. Raju has been explaining to us? Where does Shilajit come from? Asteroid, meteorite, ammonite, humification, Shilajit, and the cycle is going on. So, from Dr. Raju's and Dr. Goshal's perspective, Shilajit seems to be a big differentiator for Natrion in the market and an extremely compelling material. As it is brought to market, it seems a key element is to validate through science much of what we have discussed through the history of this material. As we think about this, I really wanted to understand the processes and the people that are making this happen within Natrion. We do quite a bit of work. You know, we have, our, as you saw, our laboratory in Calcutta. We have state-of-the-art equipment there mm -hmm. where we use real sophisticated uh, techniques like uh, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. I asked Dr. Raju if I could spend some time with his research and development team to understand how those sophisticated systems were being put to work and enabling the validation of things like Shilajit and the other innovations coming out of Natrion. The work starts first to be isolate the markers, marker isolations. We identify the markers, like what are all the markers need to be isolated, and then we isolate them using the column chromatography. You can see the one here back which is going on. This is the column chromatography. We isolate the individual markers, and then after isolation of the markers, we, if the marker is known, then we identify using the spectroscopic techniques. We have state-of-art instruments at our facility like HPLCs, GCMS, LCMS, NMR, IR, all the instruments are available. So we identify them. If the marker is unknown, then we characterize them. We elucidate their structure using these sophisticated instruments. When the characterization is over, marker is isolated, identified, and then we go for the analytical method development for quantifying those markers in the herbs. As we have this discussion with Dr. Muruganandam, his team of scientists are consistently asking for his guidance and help as they manage through many of the processes that he is explaining to us. We actually followed him a few times and saw this in action. As we settled back in, I was curious to learn more about the process development. The process development basically involves the extraction optimization, extraction process. So extraction optimization process is not same for all the herbs. Okay, the one single extraction process holds good for not all the herbs. So different chemical nature of the compounds, you know, needs different conditions of the extractions. For some herbs, you can use higher temperatures of extractions. For some herbs, you can use lower temperature of extraction. The duration of extraction time, the temperature, what we have to use, and the solvents. What are the solvents which are needed for the extracting the compounds you are looking for? 
all those things have to be optimized. Using this optimized extraction procedures, we make a pilot batches of the extracts and then we put them on the stability studies. Uh, stability studies, there are two stability studies are there. One is the accelerated stability studies and then the long-term stability studies. This is two of the standardized procedures in pharma industries. Put them the, to the stability studies to find out the shelf life of the product. The Natrion approach, as explained by Dr. Muruganandam, is unique in that they strive to optimize their extracts by keeping them as close as possible to the natural composition of these time-tested ingredients. One of the amazing things about being here in Calcutta is this juxtaposition that we see between the natural, traditional village life that's been here, frankly, for millennia, and this incredible industrial growth that you see going on right up here against it. In fact, it, it's very much symbolic of what we see going on in our industry, where we're taking these industrial scientific approaches and applying them to the age-old traditions of Ayurvedic medicine in order to bring this knowledge and the benefits of this knowledge to the world. From the ancient scriptures to the application of cutting-edge technology and science, it is incredibly interesting to consider how Ayurvedic practices, ingredients, and traditions are being validated and fascinating to spend time with the doctors and scientists leading this process. As we started our discussions with Dr. Raju, we weren't planning to spend so much time on Shilajit. However, based on the unique origins of this material, the history behind it, and the incredible research from Dr. Goshal and the Natrion team, we were simply compelled to tell this story. It is a fascinating microcosm of the overall Ayurveda story, and one that is very unique. We highly encourage you to learn more by reading Dr. Goshal's book or connecting in with Dr. Raju to get a deeper look. Further, this process led by Dr. Muruganandam puts context around the how behind this validation process as he outlines the steps and stages that he and his team go through as a finished ingredient comes to market. As we completed our journey in Kolkata, we asked Dr. Raju what is next for Natrion and his passion and conviction to continue the work of validating Ayurveda and bringing it to the world comes through loud and clear. So Dr. Raju, it's been an incredible day of learning about uh, Ayurveda, the history and the modern science, Thank but there's you. one thing I still want to ask. Yeah. What's the yeah. future look like? Future looks great. You know, our goal at Natrion is to really educate the people who are already convinced of the use of natural products and we want to really bring these products to every household in pure form, organic, non-GMO, uh, completely water extraction, nothing, uh, no chemicals added to that, that's our goal and bring them to every household. We want to see everybody using it from an early age to prevent lot of ailments. And that is our future goal. It's a worthy goal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank Roger. You.